Thank you so much for coming to our session on AR as a feature. And for everyone watching on the live stream, thank you for tuning in. We're really excited to talk to you guys about how you can supercharge your projects and products using augmented reality. But before we dive too deep into that, uh, let us introduce ourselves. My name is Austin McCasland. I am a UX designer and prototyper at Google Daydream. And before I joined Google, I've written a couple courses on AR and VR product design and development. Um, I've designed and developed some award-winning AR apps. And I uh, just am really passionate about spatial and immersive computing. Cool. And my name is Diane Wang. It's nice to meet you all. I'm a lead user experience designer. I work on Austin's team. And I'm really passionate about working at that intersection between digital and physical interfaces. Before I was working at Daydream, I was designing products at Nest. So really thinking about hardware, uh, interfaces, spatial and physical uh, computing, and everything that's in between. And before that, my background's in computer science. But in general, my day-to-day -day now is working with Austin on rapid prototyping all the time. So we're super excited to jump in and share with you uh, what we have today. So today, we're here to talk about augmented reality. We're excited because AR can give apps superpowers. But the key message today is that you don't have to make an AR app to use it. AR has progressed to a point where it can be reliably used as a technology that any app can leverage. The ability to spatially understand and output content into the world opens up new possibilities across every vertical. So today, we're going to start by talking about AR as a technology. We'll talk about where it was and has been in the past few years, and where it has gotten to today, and why we have this message for you all today. We'll spend some time talking about how you can evaluate your app for its AR potential. And this is going to draw a lot from our team's experience, working with a lot of apps, working with AR. And we'll talk about different ways you can think about your app and where we found that AR brings a lot of value. And then we'll spend the bulk of our time today talking about different approaches and processes so that you can develop your own AR features. And now I'll hand it over to Austin to jump in. All right. So I want to start off just by level setting on what we mean when we say AR, or augmented reality. So to us, there's really two key components that makes AR this awesome thing that can up-level any app. And the first of those is the ability to understand the world through the camera. So when we talk about understanding the world, it could be anything from little feature points that are on objects around. It could be detecting that a plane is somewhere. Um, it could also be more semantic understanding of the world. So if you lens a banana, we know it's a banana, right? Um, the ability to reach out and have the computer understand space is super powerful, and that's, that's one of those two spokes. The second is the ability to reach back out and put spatial content sort of believably seated in the world. So what you're looking at there is when you put Andy the Android on a table and he's moving around and there's lighting estimation happening, and there's tracking that helps keep it all in place. And when you combine the ability to understand the world through the camera and to put content back into it, all these really interesting things start to happen in terms of like use cases and user journeys that you're able to enable in your product. So before we dive into the nuts and bolts, I wanted to sort of set context for why we are talking about AR as a feature today. Um, because AR has not always been ready to be a feature in all, all different kinds of products. So we're not going to do an exact historical run through of dates and times, um, but I do want to bucket sort of eras of AR uh, from a product perspective. So the first one, the very beginning, um, AR was pretty much relegated to like lab environments, or you would see art installations that had AR. And we even consider some of the like, early projection mapping work. So projection mapping is using a projector to like, light up particular shapes and stuff um, as being these, these early first steps of AR. But if you're a product person, it's not 
that easy to see how you're going to create a product out of it unless you're doing you know, experiential marketing or immersive theater or something like that. And so if you have to get people to go to a place to experience AR, it's kind of hard to build a scalable product around it in that sense. So there's this next phase, which was, I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. If you're not, it's sort of, we were using mobile images, or images tracked on mobile devices uh, to pin content in the world. And the way that worked is you would have your phone, and there would be some sort of image or QR code. And by using that as a reference point, we could put this digital content overlaid into the world. Um, and it was awesome. It actually represented this big jump, because now you could deliver AR experiences on mobile devices, right? I could put something on a store, someone could download it, and then they could have this, this cool experience. But there were a couple of shortcomings. The, the tracking wasn't as good as what we have now, and if you lost sight of the image marker, it would kind of go haywire. And most importantly, you had to have this image marker in space, right? And that's a really tricky proposition. It's hard enough to get someone to download an app, but to get them to download an app and also print something out can be challenging. And so we did see some adoption of this tech in like marketing campaigns where there's physical collateral, or if there were instruction booklets, things like that, where you would know that your app could, could have those markers available. But the game really changed with modern AR platforms like AR Core. And this was basically, a, from a product perspective, like a quantum jump. I remember when I first saw these, these new AR platforms, I was working with the image marker stuff, right? And there was always a struggle, and I saw some videos, and I just was like, I don't believe that. That's not, that's not real. So I went out, I bought devices, and I tried it, and I remember sitting there and thinking like, man, this can actually be a thing now. This, I can release production quality user experiences with AR. And the really important thing about this is there are, there's no need for markers. There, that is a feature that you can access, but you can send anyone a link to download your app. They can download it, and no additional effort is required. They can have the experience you intended. And so lowering that barrier to entry combined with a really consistent output of quality has just really changed the game for uh, you know, AR in a product sense. And that brings us to today, which is AR as a feature. So when these, when these platforms first hit, everyone went out and we were making AR stuff. Like, that's when I made, I made an app that you can you know, paint in the air. It's really cool, really fun. Um, but these were these AR apps. And what our team has discovered, because we sort of go around inside of Google and say, how can AR unlock new potential use cases for people? is that your app doesn't have to be an AR app. And in fact, some of the most powerful ways we can execute on AR is including it just as a feature in an existing app. And today is the perfect time to be doing it because these frameworks make it super easy. When, they, when you see AR, it can look kind of like black magic, like it's super hard, you need to be a mega genius to get AR stuff happening. But in reality, uh, you know, AR Core makes it super easy and there are tons of helpful tools. So like today is the time when I think any product person can be evaluating their product for this stuff. So AR as a feature essentially means that the whole app isn't about AR. So what you see here is uh, Google Maps, right? And Google Maps is not an AR app, right? It helps you get where you're going. It helps you search for awesome stuff. Um, but it's not all about AR. However, the team in discovered that for certain areas, like in this case, walking navigation, it can be really powerful and enhance the app experience to use AR in those moments. And same in your, um, your I.O. app, right? If you pull it out and use signposts, you can get where you're going. Uh, but it's not, it's not relegated just to navigational use cases, but um, as, as we'll see later. So I'm going to kick it over to Diane, who's going to tell you about how you can assess the stuff you're working on to see if maybe AR could do something awesome with it. Cool. Thank you, Austin. So let's bring it over to all of you and start talking about how you can determine if AR is right for your app. Here are several principles and questions that you can ask yourself as you decide on whether AR has the potential to add a lot of value to your app. And this is all going to be drawn from our team's experience, uh, but we'll just kick it off with the big question. So we always start off by asking ourselves the simple question, why do we want to use AR? And that really helps ground us in user value 
and thinking about the specific value that this suite of technologies brings to us. And going a little bit deeper here, on our team, we think that there are two broad categories of experiences that AR can make shine. Use these as guidelines, as starting points to answer this question. So here are the two dimensions. You may have heard this in our developer keynote. The two dimensions here are helpfulness and creativity. So these are two broad categories, and that's one really easy way to get started and thinking about, hey, does my app fit in here? Does my feature fit in here? Um, and just thinking about these from a broad perspective, helpfulness uh, is a really great place for AR to help shine, because AR understands so much of the spatial context around a user that if you're trying to have an app that helps a user accomplish something, AR can do that in a lot uh, more quicker of a way. And when you think about creativity, AR has a lot of opportunity here to help make features shine as well. You can see that AR allows you to be a lot more expressive and engaging when you're thinking about a creativity feature. You can directly overlay things and output content into the world, and also have suggestive content that leverages our understanding of the context. But beyond these two buckets, our team also has some other insights that we found just by working across a lot of different apps. So here's one to start with. One area that we found has high AR potential is when there's information from the world that we'd like to have in our app. Often, if users need to look something up from the phone to complete a flow in an app, AR has opportunities to enhance and streamline that experience. AR has the ability to capture information from the world and make user journeys a lot easier and more streamlined. So that was from the helpfulness dimension. But when you're thinking about creativity apps as well, AR can suggest expressive content that is relevant to the scene and context. And another category of experiences that has high opportunity for AR features is when someone needs to interact with the real world to use our app. So if someone needs to do something in real life to complete a flow, these are really great signs that AR may be useful. And one example that we illustrated here is you can imagine that some, if someone has some specific dietary needs or preferences and they're at a grocery store and they really need to go and fiddle with uh, the products in front of them to understand the products that are right for them, AR has the opportunity to understand that at a much faster rate, and we can even output that in a way that's really, really natural. So this illustration shows that, for example, maybe we could just highlight that area that would have taken you a while to get to. So I've just covered two broad categories, but also two other insights. But is that all? Definitely not. These are not absolute truisms, and there are often entirely different AR opportunities in an app that don't fit in these buckets. So you're all going to have your own special scenarios. So we encourage you to use these as starting points, as ways to start thinking and having discussions about your app, and to try out the experiences. And so we're going to go in over this next. But one of the fastest ways to really understand where AR can add a lot of value is to just jump right in and start making things. And one last note is to remember that AR is a tool and a suite of technologies and will add a lot of value to some problems, but not all. But our guiding principle remains, always ask yourself, why is this better with AR? And now I'll hand it over to Austin to talk about how we get these to happen. Sweet. Thank you, Diane. So I call this part the fun part. It's the fun part for me. <laughs> um, so when we talk about building AR features, like how do we go about approaching that? And our team does this all the time, um, over and over and over again. It's great. So I'm going to run you through these three principles. And these principles, they're just sort of these lighthouse concepts that we try to keep top of mind when we're developing AR features. And there's some unique things in here that sort of differentiate an AR feature from a more traditional, um, from a more traditional uh, feature in an app. And these are that our prototypes are our sketches. Um, we consider design and development to be intrinsically linked. 
and that it's okay to be cool, but we need to strike a balance. So I'm going to dive a little bit into each of these, starting out with prototypes are our sketches. So if anyone has been in a room with designers or product people or anyone anywhere, we know that sketching is this awesome tool for communication. And for the purposes of this piece, let's think about sketches as a way that we can assess ideas. So I might make a sketch, and I give it to Diane. And we use that to figure out, like, is this idea good? What do we like about it? What don't we like about it? And those things run through product teams. You know, product management, engineering, design, everyone lays eyes on these. But we found that with AR, understanding whether or not something is good or like worth pursuing, it's really hard to capture from a sketch. There's all sorts of things that look great on paper, and then when you try to go to execute on them, they, they stumble, and it's, it's really tricky. And so we try to get to these prototypes as quickly as possible, because that's really the baseline for our AR features for us to be able to say, is this working? Like, do we want to continue on this and refine it? Um, the next uh, principle is that we consider design and development to be intrinsically linked. And I know they, they are in all normal app development cycles as well. Um, however, the, the relationship between design and engineering in AR is incredibly tight. And in fact, every time we start a project, we start design and development at the same time. We don't come up with designs and then show them to engineering. We don't even run like tight back and forth cycles. We, we sit next to each other and we'll have a computer with like a development environment happening and a computer with a design environment happening. And that's because right now there's all sorts of opportunities for design to be really helpful for some of the harder technology problems. So an example that I like to give is, you know, let's say it's pitch black, right? That's a really hard situation for AR. It, we, we lose tracking. And so from an engineering perspective, that's really hard. You're like, oh, do we need depth cameras? Do we need all this stuff? But if the design team is right there, they can say, actually, hold on. As, as long as you can tell it's dark, we'll just ask the user to go turn the lights on. Right? And we find that there's all these opportunities to design around really hard technical problems, and that the technology often informs what's even possible in a design, and you really have to try it, and the hand feels super important. So the coupling of these in AR, super critical. And the last principle I'll go over is that it's OK to be cool, but strike a balance. So in the design world, we often call these like you know moments of delight, moments where we do something that's really exceptionally powerful or useful for a user that was surprising to them, or these little moments that you see in like animations, or just you know go to dribble if you're, if you're looking for what I'm talking about. But in AR, these moments exist as well. And they're actually often much more powerful. They're these sort of moments of awe. Like if you watched the uh, keynote, you saw that shark go on stage. And that's just one of those moments that it's, it's not just a light, it's this, whoa. And we have found in our testing that that is really powerful for users because it does two things. One is that it captures their attention. And when they're more focused on our app, they more successfully complete tasks inside of them. And so it actually serves a functional purpose. And two is that we've noticed when we're working on features where we actually really focus on these awe moments and consider them worth spending time on, uh, they tend to go hand in hand with users being successful overall, even besides attention. And it really helps them be memorable against the competition. So the other part of this is strike a balance. It can be really easy to go overboard once you have the AR stuff running and turn your app into like a game experience. And maybe you want that. But you want to be on brand. And it's possible to maintain like, the, the mood and attitude of your application and have AR that's impressive and exciting um, without distracting from the core needs of your users. And now I'm going to dive into just a couple methods and techniques we use. A lot of these will probably look very familiar to you if you've done product design type stuff. But I'll give you um, some examples of how we use them in our AR practice. So they are sketching and whiteboarding, rapid prototyping, and quick user tests. And I know I just said that prototypes are our sketches. But it does not mean that we do not sketch. We do a lot of that. Um, early in the, the cycle of an idea, having a shared visual for these spatial computing concepts is super important. I've had multiple, there have been multiple times where I've had like a 30, 45 minute conversation with the you know, PM, a fellow designer, engineer, 
and we're both vibing, we're on the same page, and we're super excited, and then I go to draw what I was talking about, and it turns out that we were not on the same page and that it was very different. The, the sooner that you can get some sort of shared visual to frame your thinking around, the better, because we, the vocabulary for describing spatial problems and the way that users interact with space is just, it's really challenging, and so these visual supports are super helpful. We'll also do storyboards where we show how users are going, we anticipate them moving through space with our experience, and we'll do flowcharts, you name it. And this is really just a tool for us to iterate super fast before we even touch those prototypes. Next up is rapid prototyping, and I would have to say if our team has like a superpower, it's this. We make prototypes fast, and you too can make prototypes fast because one, they don't always need to be technology prototypes. As Diane will show you later, you can do physical prototyping in space, and often that's enough to assess an idea and at least get it off the ground. Um, but also, there's amazing tools nowadays. Like We use Unity a ton on our team to just bust out these quick and dirty prototypes just to get the hand feel. And if our prototypes are our sketches, then we do a lot of sketching, right? So we try to just get to the, the quickest and dirtiest way to feel it and try it out and assess it, and if it, if it passes muster, then we really refine it. And one of the ways that we do this refining is through quick user testing. And I don't mean like doing like a really quick survey monkey user test, although that could be fine. It's more like I'll go up to Diane and I'll tap her shoulder and I'll say, hey, try this. Right? I'll just constantly thrust new builds <laughs> of the prototype in her hand because it's really difficult to see the forest through the trees in AR. And part of that is because there's this physicality to augmented reality as a medium. And you actually develop like a muscle memory for making your app work the right way. So you're like, you're like, oh, this is how you do it. You hand it to someone else, and then they're like, whoop. You know, they're off in space, and you didn't realize that, oh, I need to have some affordance to guide them back to what they need to be doing. So lots of quick user testing and feedback. And then eventually, once you think you've landed on it, yeah, run some actual user tests, validate your feature. I'm going to kick it over to Diane, who's going to run you through what it might look like for our team to go through this process. And it's a process you might be able to scalp for your own product development. Cool, thank you. So yeah, we're going to go through the whole process and take a look at what it might look like end to end for you to start to prototype your own AR feature. And so I'll talk through the steps first right now, and then we'll walk through them one by one. And these are incorporating a lot of what Austin just said. There's principles, methods, and these are very special to AR because these features are so closely tied to the physical and world space that there's new things that classic methodologies in the field uh, might not really address. So we generally follow these steps in our process, although we always adjust steps based on what is relevant for the feature. And we recommend that you do the same kind of dig into what I'm saying and the underlying purpose behind these methodologies and pull the steps that really work for you. And so from a high level, we always start our process by jumping into a brainstorm and opening up the AR opportunities. This is where you start to bring in a lot of people, get a lot of diverse perspectives, bring out the creativity in the group. And then we start deciding, and this is where my previous conversation about how you can evaluate different AR features and apps comes in handy. Then after we decide on our ideas, we start sketching. And this is where we get the broad strokes of all our ideas. Austin talked about this before. But there's different types of sketching. You can work with any low fidelity materials you have around you. Uh, but then we gradually push it toward physical testing. And if it's, a, if it's really applicable, you might have some apps that are really closely tied to the physical world space and physical elements that are all around you. So the fastest way to get a sense of those interactions is just to try those out. And then after that, we kind of understand our concepts. So we jump into design and development simultaneously. And I'll talk more about how we do that later. And another kind of underlying step that we kind of consider more horizontal is we're always testing early and often. And that's with the people around us. But it's also great to try to incorporate your users as soon as you can. And we always wrap up our process by taking the feedback that we get from all of our tests. And we prioritize the stuff that we want to incorporate. We think about supporting functionality. And then we walk out with a really cohesive concept. 
But jumping right in, let's just start talking about the brainstorm phase. And so this is where we open up all the opportunities. We have a really great, robust conversation with our group. And we really try to pull together people of diverse perspectives, so people from different functions, of different backgrounds, especially from backgrounds of people who will be using your feature. So if people can empathize with those groups, try to pull them in. And if you get a diverse group, you also get really uh, creative ideas on the board as well. And this photo shows you what one of our brainstorms might look like. Over here, I'm just putting ideas on the board, but I'm using a design methodology called affinity mapping, where we're grouping a lot of the post-its together by theme, and that really lets us take a step back and talk about the themes that are really exciting before we get too caught up into details. And once we have our ideas on the board, we have discussions about the ideas that we are most excited about and have the most AR potential. And this is where our previous sections on evaluating AR apps and features comes in handy. And this photo shows what one group of ideas may look like at the end of our brainstorm. We're doing something called dot voting, where we give each person a certain number of votes. And these are dot stickers. And we use this as a way to gauge the general interest and uh, ones that we're the most excited about as a group. And we use this as a way to facilitate our conversations and not to decide our ideas. Um, so try this out yourself. And one other tip is that our team has done this a lot. So we find that giving each person around three to five dot stickers is a really great uh, balance between trying to get a nice breadth of votes but not spending way too much time trying to get those votes down. And now, once we've decided on our ideas, we jump into sketching. So we sketch to get a first pass glance at the solutions that we're excited about. In this photo, I'm storyboarding a complete journey of an AR feature using whiteboard and marker. And this is where you can see that AR starts to have a difference in classic design methodologies as well. This is not a sketch that you would typically have for a 2D app, because you can see that I'm sketching a user in world space with elements that are pinned in world space. So you can see that even at this stage, we're starting to think a little bit differently. And you might have to uh, pull out your perspective drawing skills. <laughs> and so we encourage anyone to use any low fidelity and scrappy materials that are available. You can do pen and paper, whiteboard and marker, to just try out the entire user journey and take a look at the feature uh, at a first glance. So one unique part about working as AR is that UI elements interact with physical elements in the real world. So it's a great idea to try out your designs through physical prototyping. So here's a really great photo of something that our team tried out. We have these UI elements that we wanted to have pinned to the world's uh, these fruits. And so in order to understand a few factors, like scale, uh, legibility, and how they look like and feel like in world space, we just created and started prototyping with physical elements. So paper is great for this. We've worked with Legos. We've worked with clay. Those are really great low fidelity physical um, things to start working with. And once we've gotten a good look at initial designs, we jump into design and development simultaneously. And Austin talked about this a bit before. But our team really enjoys working with Sketch for 2D UI designs and Unity to develop our experiences quickly. And at this stage, we work through a lot of iterations of our concepts as questions show up. We usually have designers and developers partnering up so you have that really nice collaboration and just back and forth of questions along the way. And this step is incorporated into some of the previous steps as well. Uh, but testing early and often is really key to a successful AR feature, since there are so many edge cases and interactions that we've never encountered before in 2D designs. And here's a photo of Austin testing out a prototype in a lightweight manner <laughs> with real-world objects. Beautiful. In our, in our office. Uh, yeah, just try to do it really early, really often. And 
continue testing with users all the way through development. I know we're talking a lot about rapid prototyping for early concepting of things that are just kicking off. But something that's really important is work with your stakeholders or whoever is involved in pushing your feature to launch. Work th with them along the way to share your insights, but also push them to also continue testing along the way. And here's our last step for today. Once we have a lot of feedback from your colleagues, from users, um, we bring this feedback back for final polish. And this is where we walk through all of the remaining pieces for a cohesive feature. And some examples of what we'll be working through in this phase include notifications, edge cases in different contexts, offline scenarios, and scalability. But now I'll hand it back to Austin to bring everything together. Cool. Thank you. So upgrading your app with AR. I hope you guys do it, because it's rad. Um, Let's pull together everything we talked about today. So if you are a product person, or a designer, or an engineer, or anyone who cares about the space, maybe you have an idea for a product, really start thinking about AR and what you're working on. And you should really just evaluate your own app for AR potential. Think about, are there ways that I might be able to make this thing easier to do for my users, or more exciting for my users to do? Or is there something that we never could have done before that we can show them in the real world? And you know, it's like, it's not right for every problem, but if, it, if you can answer the question, why is this feature better in AR, then you should do it in AR. <laughs> the next is that you won't know if it's good or not until you try it. So try stuff out. And I'm not kidding, the suite of tools that are available for creating quick features that you can test out are it, it, it's amazing. So I'm a designer, and I do some coding, and I make these all day, every day. Um, if you're an engineer, take, go on Unity's website and check it out, or do native stuff. It's, it's a lot less intimidating than you think to build these AR experiences. Like, just get your feet wet. I bet it's way more fun and easy than you expect. And AR Core makes a lot of the hard stuff really easy. And finally, Keep on testing and testing and testing until you're confident it's awesome, and deploy it. Thank you very much for coming to our session. I'm Austin McCaslin. I'm Diane Wang. And we hope you guys enjoyed it and build some super-powered apps with AR. Cheers, Thank guys. Thank you.